Hey guys, it's Bill Vinci and Ryan Vinci from No Time for Nonsense. Ryan's not here tonight, but we got a special fill in tonight. Dun, dun, dun. There he is, Anthony Z. They know him by Z. Z, how you doing, buddy? Bill, thanks for having me, man. It's Abs- a treat tonight. Absolutely, man. Thanks for joining us tonight. We are live. It's a Monday night. You know what that means. Another show tonight. No Time for Nonsense. We got special guest, former Major League baseball player and former Rome, New Yorker, Arky Sinfraco join us. There he is. What's up, Ark? Hey, guys. How you doing? Ark. <laughs> doing good, man. Now, just to give you a little recap quick, Z and Ark are cousins. Yes. So that was one of the reasons we wanted to bring him on tonight. And it's good. I haven't seen you since I was a kid. Uh, in fact, our grand- our, our grandfathers were brothers. Okay. That's so, the connection right. there. And it, it, we're, we're Leones, if you will. So don't hold that against either one of us. I won't. I won't. <laughs> no, you're good. So we are we are live. So guys, if you have any questions for Arky or me or Z, you can message them on the board. We got three screens going tonight. <laughs> and a lot of people are already joining us tonight. I want to say hi to a couple of people. John Pappas said hello. Uh, Debbie Galupi. Hi, Aunt uh, Carrie. Tartaglia's on. Hi, cuz. Uh, Donna said hello. Arky. You got a lot of people oh, are, are, are already jo- Yeah, do you call that? <laughs> you did, you too. You call that, too. <laughs> He's like, guaranteed Donna's going to be on tonight. So she's already I joining can, us. I can. I can guarantee you the questions she wants to ask. I can guarantee you that. Well, we will. We will be. Uh, <laughs> we'll be watching for that. Tim Owens just jumped on. Danny Millett. Yeah. Oh God, oh. man, a lot of people on tonight. So, Arky, thanks for joining us tonight, man, and uh, spending an hour with us, uh, catching up. It's been a few years since I saw you. Usually, I run into you at the World Series of Botch, but with, with this right. year's uh, cancellation, were you going to come up for that this year? Yeah, you know, uh, I. I mean, everybody in Rome looks forward to that, right? It's such a great, it's a great week. You, know, you yep. get to see everybody you haven't seen in a while. I get to, you know, play ball with my dad and, you know, maybe win a couple of games. If we don't, then, you know, we, we have fun the rest of the week, which uh, typically happens. So. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. It's, it's, it's so much fun. Uh, what Donna, Donna said, excuse me, Aunt Donna. Excuse me, Aunt Donna. Uh, uh, don't get her started. I know. <laughs> Car- Car- Carrie said behave, Mom. So they're, they're watching each other out yeah, here. They're going to fight. <laughs> so, Ark, let, let's talk a little bit about growing up in Rome before we get into your yeah. baseball and everything. So we played Little League together. We're going back to the Rome National League oh, days. Yeah. Rome Cable Leagues. Uh, you, we were the infielders. We played together there. Um, how fun was it growing up in Rome with such a big family, Italian family? Oh man, it was, it was great. I mean, I don't know. I always look back on that times in my life where, you know, life was, life was normal. And, um, you know, we're kind of just as a kid, you know, riding my own bike to the, to the park, to the national legal field, cutting through Rome cable, you know, doing that kind of stuff as a kid, it's, there's so much freedom, so much fun. Um, you know, and, you know, I had a huge, you know, obviously Italian family behind me. So, you know, the times I wasn't playing baseball, I was, you know, doing family events, usually in my backyard. So just a great, a great overall experience. Yeah, I was going to say, we both have big, big Italian families in Rome. We all knew each other. Um, and your cousin, Anne-Marie Rosado, said, hey, cuz, um, I'll keep you updated. Mm-hmm. Coach Antonio said, how you doing? Billy, Arky, and Z. Coach Antonio. How you doing, Coach? <laughs> <laughs> he was he's been promoting your show all week, by the way. Yes, he has. He has, you know, hasn't I, he? I, I see him on Facebook all the time, man. He's yeah, he's he's a social media. He's got it going on. I see he him does. make notes of it on his page. He does, I know. <laughs> Look, I'm even wearing the I'm wearing the dark blue and the light blue for OCC, but you are you know, different I half, it's... but I got the dark blue, light blue. It, it is cool. So, Z, we're going to kind of bounce off in uh, one another. Mark Jure said hello. Marky, Marky's on. Um, so, Ark, I want to talk a little bit about baseball once you got to RFA and then your days at Purdue and stuff. So, tell us a little bit about that. Um, well, you know what? I don't know. I mean, how much detail you want, really? I mean, you it talk- was, for me, actually, going to, for me to go into Purdue is actually a, a unique experience, right? I was, you know, I was at OCC, and it was coming off of my uh, – after my freshman year, um, and I, you know, I, was, I went back to play Smith Post. Um, so I was kind of an older Smith Post player because I was young in age out of high school. So, you know, it happened. It was just a freak thing, right? I mean, I never knew anything about Purdue University and the coaching staff and the baseball. And, you know, the Big Ten was the Big Ten. But, right. um, you know, I, you know he, he saw me play one game at Smith Post. I faced, you know, I faced Joe Kelly, who at that point was yeah. – 
you know, being recruited by a lot of guys, you know, yep. power pitching left-handed guy. Right. Um, and I had a great game that day. I mean, I think I hit a grand slam and, you know, the double and, you know, I think I had like, you know, four or five RBIs or whatever it was. And I didn't even know he was there. Right. I mean, I was just, I was just playing and right. he came up to me after he's like, you know, how would you like to go to Purdue? I'm like, you know, where is pretty first of all uh, <laughs> and, and he actually it's, wanted me to come he wanted he, like it was like it was probably middle of july or end of july and he's like no we want you to come this year like in like two or three weeks and i'm wow. like i can't like there's no way i can pull that off so right anyway we talked it over and i ended up finishing my career at occ and and going to purdue but what a what a great experience yeah, yeah, I was going to say. Um, Donna wanted me to ask, remember Papa throwing the ball to you in the backyard on West Dominic Street? I think we I think we always, huh? You always play ball. You know what? See, I got to tell you. I was th- always playing ball. Always. Yeah, always. always. Franklin Field. To wherever yeah. we could, wherever we could get Columbus an open school. park. I used to play Columbus School with my cousin yeah. Paulie on the parking lot. Yeah. I'd play tennis ball or I played wiffle ball. Pretty much nonstop my whole life with you know Chris Destito, Louis Viv, oh, yeah. you know Billy Tag, Tony Bruso. Like we were nonstop playing wiffle ball, like nonstop. Yeah, yeah, and absolutely talking about Louis Viv. I do got to thank a couple sponsors for the, tonight's show before we go forward. First, I want to thank uh, Joey's at three hundred seven and Matt Grabsky. Uh, they got a catering. Fr- Seven eighty sixty four, and then we got to thank the Tukalana Club. Arky will know a little bit about this. His father was on the board at the Tuki Club. Uh, Angela Sinfraco, Mr. C, place has been around nineteen twenty five as a social club and by Italian immigrants. Home of the World Series of Botch, which you know we're really sad that that was canceled this year, but looking forward to coming back next year. Also, want to thank Lou Viviani. Uh, Lou, Viv- Lou Viviani Law Firm is located in Rome, New York, at 220 West Court Street. Give Lou a call. Great family, great guy. He'll take care of you. He's at 315-533-7613. Also, MLO Salon, uh, another Rome girl, Maria Orbanati, a beautiful and peaceful salon and spa in Cicero, New York. Uh, you can call Maria to get in for an appointment at 315 288 2020 and our last sponsor of the night, Diane Simfraco, offer an individual and family uh, cousin of Arky, and uh, you can give her a call at 315-271-6122. Thank you guys for sponsoring tonight's show. So Lou Viviani is saying he's not surprised that Arky didn't know where Purdue was. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh gosh. Argy, do you feel not, like not surprising? Do you feel like Purdue is what helped you develop as a complete ball player? I think Purdue opened my eyes to a bigger world of baseball. Mm-hmm. You know, like I, I was so focused on. I mean, even when I was in OCC, right? I mean, I, I you know, I, 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 you know, I wanted to go to kind of the, the local schools, right? The Ithaca Colleges, the Utica College. Like, I just wanted to play locally, right? I think. The opportunity to go to the Midwest, I think, just opened my eyes to just a, a world of baseball that I, I really, honest and truly, didn't really even know existed. Right? I mean, I, you know, I heard of Purdue and you know Michigan and you know those big schools, but you know, you know, growing up in the East Coast, you know, you hear of the Southern schools, right? The Florida schools, you right. know, not necessarily the Midwest or the California schools. Yeah, uh, yeah actually. Sorry. Debbie Galupi just said Arky was very helpful with my son making a decision on playing collegiate baseball. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I loved working what, with him. I loved working what, with him. It was great. Yeah, that's awesome. We, he was playing Smith Post at the time, and I was home was last year for the World Series. And I uh-huh. took him in the cages at Franklin Field for a little bit, talked to him, good kid, good player. So I hope he does well. 
That, that's awesome. Uh, that, Coach Antonio said two-time NCCA Regional Three champions. There he was, regional player twice. Wow. Yeah, you were, weren't you? And on the Dodger Community <laughs> Hall of Fame. Man, Coach is bringing up all kinds of awards. He's, he's you know, really... and it's funny. It's funny, though, man, Billy, because I went to OCC, and I, you know, I, I love playing. And I just wanted to keep playing. And Coach, and coach saw me play at the, I think, the COL Championship or something. And it was actually in Syracuse. So he came up to me and talked to my parents about, you know, keep playing at OCC. And even when I went to OCC, I mean, I wasn't I – was, I was still young. So I was, I was still on the younger side. I think I was still 17. So, you know, these guys were probably bigger and stronger than I was. I was kind mm-hmm. of a little skinny kid. Um, but, you know, even then I was, you know, I was, a, I was a backup guy behind one of my best friends now, Jim Slayton, who went there playing first base. And actually our – our All-American right fielder, Dave Rusty, got hurt. And, um, you know, he came to me and said, can you play right field? I said, yeah, I can. So he put me in right field. It was just a total fluke, right? I mean, yeah, he doesn't get hurt. I don't know if I break the lineup at OCC. And who knows what happens then, right? It's just kind of a fluke thing. I think, you know, it's, it's part luck, part skill, and part yeah. of you know, God's yeah. will, I guess. Absolutely. Yeah, I got to say, Arky, you haven't changed a freaking bet. You look the same as you did in freaking school. Does, did you ever age? What the? What is it out there with that? With the uh, Western Sun, the California air, man. man look at, look at this gonna, world I live in. I was going to say, look, he's got, the, he's got the freaking palm trees, the, the, the water in back. Man, I'm in the. We're in the wrong state, Z. What I knew that from the beginning, yeah. right? I think I think we're both in the wrong state, but that's okay. We won't go there. Oh man. <laughs> All right. So let's see. Don asked a question. Ask him. Let's see. Ask him how he used to say hello to me when he was on the field. Uh, see, got, that's the question. A, I knew it's coming. I uh, told you. I was know this it's a the secret, exact question. Secret hello. He was gonna. So every time I got like a hit or something, or I got in the batter's box. Like everybody wanted, like, oh, give me a sign. Like, give me some sort of sign. Like if I got. So if I got on base, I I touch my nose, and that was kind of like my, you know, say hi to the kids and the family. Like, okay, you know, right. Hi, everyone. My Aunt Donna wanted something very specific. So when I got in the batter's box, she wanted me to readjust my cup. So every time I readjusted my cup, it was a load of my Aunt Donna. Why does so, it not surprise me? That's there classic. we go. Yeah, right? See? That that's is, what I'm talking about, right? That is classic right there. Oh, man. And Carrie said, Ma, like she knew Yo, she that knew. was coming. She knew. Uh, everybody that's in our so family funny. knew that was coming. Everybody oh, knew that was coming. That is that's classic. Uh, Brian Cornish said, "I lived on Liberty Street back in the '90s. My garage and Arky's family driveway were off a of Camp Street that ran between Liberty and Domic. I distinctly remember Arky one morning shoveling and clearing the snow from his father's car. Three weeks later, he was in the bigs. It was that quick. You went from shoveling quick. slow in Rome into it the actually in- was it, yeah, it was that quick. It really, it's it's really, I don't know." It's really a really unique story, right? I mean, it's kind of, it's, it's funny. I look back on my career, just some of the things in, you know, I, I had a decent career. I felt like I played, you know, six years longer than I thought I would play. But I mean, for me, my road there was a little bit, I guess, I guess you know, being a higher draft pick in the fifth round, I had some opportunities, but, you know, I broke my hand one year in double A. And so I had to go back to Jacksonville you know, and kind of repeat that year. And then the third year, actually, is when I came back after I broke my hand. Then I went to Harrisburg for my third year in double A. Yep. And, um, you know, at that point, three years in double A, you're kind of like, okay, where is this going, right? And getting older. And I had a, ended up having, again, same same story. Like, I, was, I wasn't I was playing. I wasn't in the opening day lineup. Um, and I was kind of like, wow, it's my third year in double A, and I'm not, I'm not playing. I'm like, what's going on? And, um, you know, one of our, our third basemen, Brian Costco, who went to – North Carolina State um, got hurt, tweaked something. They put me in the lineup, and I played every day after that. It was just kind of like a, a Wally Pip moment, man, where I just, you know, I ended up hitting like second in the league in the Eastern League and yeah. literally went to winter ball. I came home from winter ball. I live with my parents, right? Um, and I, at that point, I was married and I had my son, Angela, at that point. So we're living with my parents. And, uh, yeah, I went to Big League. I didn't invite to Big League camp, non-roster. And, you know, like literally three months later, I'm in the Big Leagues. And so it's that like crazy. I, you know? <laughs> wow. It is, crazy. That's amazing. I want to ask you about that, that night when you got drafted by the Expos. What was it like? How excited yeah, were great. you? That was, well, you know, I, I got drafted twice by the Pittsburgh Pirates. That's right. Um, 
you know, so out of they had that January draft and the June draft. So I got drafted both in the January and June draft, and I didn't sign. I went back to school, and I was like, you know what, we're, we're just going to finish out at OCC and see what happens. And, and then I went to Purdue, and then I, you know, got drafted again from, from Montreal. And I, I knew it was coming. I, I talked to the scout there. He said, listen, we're really going to go after you, blah, blah, blah. And we just, we just were coming off of the Big Ten championship, Big Ten tournament. And, um, you know, it was, it was, I don't know. I look back on it now, and I was kind of semi-naive about the whole thing. Like, I, you know, I mean, I don't know. I never, I always wanted to be a big league player, right? And my mom will testify to that. But the road to get there, I was just, I didn't know, right? I mean, I just didn't know it. I, I knew about the draft. and Right. You know, that was kind of it, right? So, you know, when I got drafted and, you know, Scott came to my house, we signed the, you know, signed the contract and everything. And I ended up going to Jamestown, which was really probably good for me because I got to stay at home, you know, kind of around mm-hmm. home. And everybody got to see me play again that kind of didn't get to see me play in college. So I got to play Utica, which was great. Yeah, it, was, yeah. it was great. It was like everywhere mm-hmm. we went, we went, you know, Jamestown was so far, so far west that everywhere we played, we came closer to Rome. So. You know, that was that was just a good experience for my first year. You know, it what's amazing, Eric, we had some great, great ball players come through Rome area and only two made it to the major leagues. Yeah. You and M. Yeah. Rozier. Yeah. I mean that that's it. Yeah. And you know, Rome it, it's just loaded with great baseball players. So for you to play that long in the major leagues, man, it, it's it's exciting. And I remember coming up to a few of the expo games up at the stadium and love going. I actually really miss Montreal, by the way. Yeah, me too. Do you? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I always was a big fan with Gary Carter, and then yeah. Vlad Guerrero came up and yeah. then afterwards. And uh, who was the other one? Uh, they had Mark, uh, Delano of the Shields, Marquise, Marquise Grissom, Grissom, Marquise Grissom, 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 yeah, when you think about that, I mean, and that was the other thing too, like that aligned with kind of my career is I, I got into an organization that believed in young players, right? I mean, they 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 did an unbelievable job of grooming young people to be successful, right? I mean, you look at our, I, I just look at my team that I played on and the guys that I came up with, like, you know, John Vanderwall, Marquise, mm-hmm. Delino. I mean, all these guys, Larry Walker, Moises yeah. Alou. You know, Grissom. I mean, it's just it's a never ending list of players yeah. that are all had great careers, man. Right. Like they they all did well. They did. You know? You gotta give a lot of credit to the expo scouting system because if oh, it yeah. wasn't such a low budget team and these guys could have signed, mm-hmm. I mean that's the problem, right? Is that these guys when they when they got better they went to other teams where they were paid more money, right? I mean, is that part yep. of yeah, no, absolutely. And there was always a problem in Montreal, right, because of the provincial in Montreal and Canadian taxes, right? To kind of keep free agents there was almost impossible, right? I mean, right. Just, they couldn't pay people enough money with their attendance to keep guys there. It just couldn't. With the tax, you'd have to give them a 30% salary increase. And right. Montreal could never afford that. That was, that was their demise, actually, because they just, you know, they kind of keep young players going through the organization and not be able to sign free agents. Yeah, it's a tough task, especially now in baseball. Right? I mean, now baseball, you got to have some money behind you. you know? Right. And now you got two major league Hall of Famers that played with the ex- Randy Johnson and Pedro, <laughs> right? That came right yeah, up dude. through that, which was awesome. It's unbelievable. Like, I, and that's the other thing too. I look at my career, right? I and mean, I played with, I don't know, like, I mean, how many, ho- how many Hall of Famers? Gary Carter. <laughs> I mean, Trevor Hoffman, Larry Walker. I mean, Tony you know, Gwynn. Randy Johnson was in, Tony Gwynn. I mean, it's just, I, I don't know, I've got probably like seven Hall of Famers. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, Damn, That's what? amazing. Like, amazing. <laughs> it is amazing. <laughs> it, wow. it is. It's really, and you know, Bruce Bochy will be another one probably, you know, yeah. maybe, you know, as soon as he's eligible, you know, yeah. he'll be, a, he'll be going in, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah Mon- it was a great time. It was a great time in baseball. Montreal's known as like a party town. Were you taking place in any of those festivities that go on in Montreal? <laughs> hey, what do you, hey, what do you know about Montreal? <laughs> don't, you, don't you worry about what I know about Montreal. <laughs> Montreal was a, uh, an interesting town, you know. It was, yeah. uh, it was like going to Europe, man, and players loved going there. I mean, obviously. Yeah. For many different reasons. But mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, you know, it's... It was a fun town. It's a beautiful town, too. I do miss Montreal. I think they should have a team, right? I do, I mean, too. Mm-hmm. The Olympic yeah. Stadium wasn't the right setting for it. Right, right. But that's what they had, so they used it. But, you know, they have a beautiful downtown, like the beautiful ballpark downtown by kind of the Molson's Arena, whatever they call it now. Yeah. It's, you know, it's great. It would be great. Yeah. I think if they came back, I think they'd have a bigger 
bigger attendance and stuff. Just the second time around. I actually missed the hats. I loved the Expo hats back in the oh, day. And I, I actually, it. I ran into your mom at Dippin' Donuts <laughs> about five months ago now, and I said, I cannot find an Expo's hat. She goes, I'll get you one. Arky's got a thousand of them. I'll get you a hat from Arky. Six months later, I still don't have a freaking hat from you. You must have an Expo's hat laying around somewhere, Ark. What the freak? You do? I'll have to get one when you come I, back. I love every time I see every time I see a like a kid wearing an old Expo hat, I always say, Man, that's a solid hat. Like I just yeah. I love it. It's unique, I do. it's sweet, it's yeah. yeah, it is a cool yeah, it's hat. Always my, it was always my son Angelo's favorite hat. The old yeah, red, white, yeah. Blue. it's cool. Arky, are you a collector of memorabilia? Oh, Baseball I have memorabilia? a lot. Yeah? Yeah, I have a lot. I, You know what? I don't um, I don't show. I have, a, I have a lot. My garage is kind of like, you know, California, everybody fixes up their garage. It's kind of like an extension of my house. So it's kind of like I have a couch and TV and everything in there. It's kind of like my man cave because we don't have basements. So we kind of transform our garage into kind of the man cave. So I have all my like pictures and stuff hanging out there, you know, and all my baseball stuff. But I have so much more that I haven't even. Yeah, I used to always get like, I don't know, I I, I wouldn't say took advantage of it, but I, I a lot of people like I always got like baseball signs. So when we traveled, I got like four or five guys. I got baseballs, and the clubhouse guy would bring baseballs over to the visiting clubhouse or the home clubhouse, and they would sign balls or. I got a bat from like everybody that I ever played with, like from the old Montreal days and the San Diego wow. days, whether they were on San Diego or whether they were playing for someone else. So I collected all their bats. It's kind of like all my old teammates. So it's quite That's a collection cool. of bats, but they're in a box in my attic. So they're cool, but. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you I didn't do something with them, right? Yeah, you don't have them hanging on the wall on the bat racks or anything like I that. I don't. No. Nah. Maybe in my next house, I'll I'll have a straight <laughs> baseball room, but I don't. I don't. I don't have that today. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's catch up. We got a couple of people mentioned some things. Mark Simfraco got on. Uh, Dave Sabriglia. <laughs> Said, Arky's mom always had the cowbell at the Rome National Little League games <laughs> along with the cheering section. And, boy, I do remember that cowbell. Your mom oh my gosh. and Nick Kalikia's mom had those uh, bells, yeah. and they would ring them. Yeah. And it was oh, – yeah. I could still Cookie hear those Izzo, Cookie Izzo was back there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, they had it. Yeah, yeah. It was – uh, I'm I telling you, we had some – we had some good teams in National Little League. We, we had some did. good players, man. We, we did, just, man. You know? I, those are you know, fun all days. those guys are still all my friend. Right? They're all they're all still good friends. Like uh, you know, it's 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 funny to still see him. We still talk about the National Little League days, getting the getting the hot dog and coke after the after game. After the game, yeah, that was that was. <laughs> we always look forward to it. even if you won or lost, you still got the hot dog. You know what's sad, Arky, <laughs> is actually I drive down to that field at least twice a year, and I just walk around the field. I went down with Fran DiClemente this past year, and I told yeah. Fran, I says, I want to bring baseball back to Rome. There's only about four, maybe five little league teams left in Rome, oh. which is crazy to me. It blows my fucking it's mind. Crazy. Why don't we have little league teams out there? So I told Fran, we got to get baseball back. I got to bring it back. The field is still in great shape. Um, they yeah. still take care of it. I would just love to get something down there playing. Um, I'm in. A, I'm in. Let me know you, what I can do to help. Yeah, I would. And I, I told Fran, I said, you know, I'd like to talk to Arky and a few other people. I know uh, John Galandi said he would help out if he could. And I think we should, I would really like to get, just go out there and even do some clinics, try to bring it back to Rome. Um, mm -hmm. Yo, putting your name out there would be great. I mean, we'd love to do that. And I think. I know I could get the kids to play. It's just going out there and getting them out of the house and off the computers and off the, the game systems and get them on the field. Just teach them the fundamentals of the game and, and then and get the league back. Indeed. Right? Yeah. Yeah, no, I, 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 I'm with you. I, so that, I'm with you. I mean, I mean, here in Southern Cal, we don't have that. I mean, we, we have a problem with the Little League, but we don't have that problem with uh, – Sorry, my dog is attacking no, something. That's all right. I hear. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I'm with you, man. I, I'm in. Let me know. You know okay. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to help. Okay. That's good. And we, funny because we had a bunch of guys. I thought about doing something like because we had a bunch of guys for Trevor's. We all stayed at the casino. We had probably like 35, 40 guys where I was kind of the organizer. So I, I organized everybody's stay. We played golf for four or five days. And I. I really thought about having something there, but I, I didn't think of it in time. Mm. Stupid me. I had all the right people there to kind of do like 
some massive clinic that I'm sure the guys would have done. So oh, maybe man. Bochy's thing, we kind of reschedule that. We have that, kind of a, you know. That would be cool. That would be fun. I think that'd be great. It'd be great yeah. for Rome and, and just seeing the kids come out. Because, Eric, when we grew up and we used to go to these clinics, you know, there was always, they always brought in some college kids, some bigger name players. And and we looked up at them like, man, this guy's playing college baseball. And, and we don't have that now. There's there's nobody like that to come in that these kids can see. And you can talk to them about your experience playing in the major leagues and stuff. And I think that could bring back yeah, some of the I interest, know. you know? Okay, the, no, I definitely think so. The, dog, the dog's tearing something up. Hang, okay. on, hang on, hang on. I want to be right back. <laughs> Go to bed, dog. Man, the do- I could hear sure. the dog just ripping something to shreds over there. And this dog moment is brought to you by Joey's at 307. <laughs> Go visit him on Mohawk Street today. He's in got Utica. the water my, bucket. He's my You're best gonna... friend. Oh, man. Look, what, there he is. Look at What's this. his name, Mark? Buddy. 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 Oh, he's cute. Oh, he is a cute dog. Look at oh, him. He's a little puppy. He just wants to hang out. Yeah, he's he's five months old, and yeah. Oh man, that's anything. It. This is this is what this is what he's attacking, right? Oh my god! Oh man, <laughs> he threw it. I thought you were gonna pour the water on if you came near you. Look, he ate it. That's oh my god! That's the watering can. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's hysterical. Oh. Hey, Ark, I want to bring it. I want to bring it back to the career a little bit. So you go from Montreal to San Diego. What's that transition like? Going from like the coldest city in Major League Baseball to like the warmest city in Major League Baseball. Um, man, I tell you, it, when I first stepped off the plane in San Diego, I was like, "Holy cow, this is really nice." I've never. I was never. You know, I, I traveled out here to play. Mm-hmm. Um, it's when I was in Montreal, so I. I you know, I knew the park, but I didn't. I didn't really. We didn't really get out much in San Diego, right? I mean, we, we kind of went to some specific areas in the beach, but not necessarily all of San Diego. But and I was lucky because when I got traded, when I got traded over here it was the Sheffield deal, where he went to Florida, and then Hoffy came to San Diego, mm-hmm. and I came in from Montreal to play third for for Sheffield, and um, it was, you know, I was here actually like three days when I got traded. They pulled me off the field. They said you can't see anything. We're gonna we're gonna fly you to San Diego tomorrow morning at like six thirty. But you you got to stay underground. So I had three days of in San Diego doing nothing. Like I played golf. I like it was like a three day vacation because I didn't announce the trade yet. They're still working all the trade deals. So I got an opportunity to kind of cruise around San Diego and, and check it all out. But I mean, it's a yeah, it's 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 a it's a beautiful place. I mean, it's it's hard it's hard to leave once you once you come out here. Yeah, I was gonna say, did you get a chance to play with Caminetti in San Diego? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. oh yeah. I was well, I, I was the third baseman. I was I was the pre Caminetti third baseman. So that was that's right. That you was were... <laughs> when I yeah. made that trade. My third base days ended. Yeah, for, yeah. That's when I became a utility player. That's when I uh, started playing all over the place: third base, first base, outfield. You know, That's I right. kind of, I, I became kind of the utility guy, which was great for me because it probably kept me in the big leagues sure. longer than it, you know, longer than I would if I was a, you know, played one position. And you know, Arky, that's a great point you bring up. A lot of kids today, um, and I'm doing some coaching now and stuff. When you ask a kid, "Can you go play third? No, I'm only play. I only play second base. Today, yeah. when you were asked to play a position, Crazy. you went wherever you could get in the lineup. I mean, you didn't play. You oh weren't strictly God. a second yeah. baseman. You could play short. You could play third. I mean, catching's a little different, although you did it. You did it I in did one it. game. I did it. He did, I every, did posi- it. Yeah. every position. That was insane, yeah. by the way. Nobody I, – I, I don't know <laughs> if that ever be done again. Every position in the yeah. game besides pitcher. Yeah, it was I, great. It, I did that. I, I did it at Cooperstown, actually. That's right. It's great. That's right. So that would be yeah, something. I, and I caught and I caught at a game too. I caught another game where in San Diego where both our catchers got thrown out. So I got I got a, <laughs> about two or three innings. I think as an emergency catcher, I was always the third emergency catcher. Man, isn't that so? All right, can you tell? Because there are a lot of kids that are listening and their parents are listening. Can you kind of tell the kids nowadays playing that uh, you know how important it is to kind of be movable in, in the lineup yeah. or in the field? Just talk a little bit about that. Well, it's funny. I had a, I had an early experience with it, right? Because I mean, everybody, every infielder that gets drafted is a, a shortstop, right? I mean, it's, it's just so many good shortstops, and they tend to move around, right? So, 
I, you know, when I got drafted, I went to Jamestown, and you know that year they drafted a, a kid named Delano De Shields, which was their number one pick and a shortstop. So my shortstop days quickly ended, um, and, I, and I actually moved to second base. I played second base. Actually, it was funny because you know later Delano had a long career as a second baseman. So you know at that point they said, "Listen, Delano's going to play short. He's a high school kid. We're going to develop him. You're probably better than him defensively, but." We're, he's our number one pick, so he's going to play short every day. You're going to play second, and I'm like, I, second, like I, you know, I'm like, okay, you know, I was right. six foot two guy at that point, and playing second base, I'm like, sure, I'll do it. And I think it helped me a ton, right? Because it just one, it moved me around, and it gave me an opportunity. But you know, I got to play with Delino and, and got to play every day, um, you know. And then later in my career, I, I remember this to the day, like. Felipe Lou came to me one day, we were in St. Louis and it was raining and he's like, listen, kid, you're going to play left field today. I'm like, he goes, you better go take some fly balls. I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> like, I mean, it's, it's, it's one thing to do it like in yeah. little league or something, but in a big league stadium, like sure. it's, it's scary, man. Yeah. It is. It's scary. Right. Cause that was one of probably the only time in a big league stadium I was actually like, scared like i was like i'm sure yeah i I, I was terrified like yeah i mean and it i actually ended up making i think i made like a diving play i I, unconsciously i made like some diving i ran in and like dove and caught a ball and i to this day it's like it was like an out-of-body experience like it just (laughs) happened and it was over right but i don't know it happened a lot actually in my career probably where you just a play just happens and it's over and you just realize what you just did kind of thing. Right. And yeah. That was definitely one of them. Yeah. But yeah. That was my first experience of being terrified playing outfield. I know. That's crazy. So it, it pays off to be a mm-hmm. yes man. That's the moral yeah, of the story. Absolutely, man. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, especially, I mean, I don't, you know, Hey, I mean, it's the best way to hang around. Right. Exactly. Is, is, you know, just learn different positions. And I, and I took, and I took, um, I took, you know, ground balls at every position. I took fly balls at every position. I mean, I did it every day, you know, pregame. So I, I moved around and did a lot of stuff, which was fun. I got to, you know, I got to goof around with Caminetti one day and go over and goof around with Wally Joyner one day. And, you know, mm. Chris Gomez, who's one of my really good friends, I take ground balls with him one day. I go yeah. to the outfield with Tony one day. And, you know, so it was kind of fun. It was kind of like my way of. You know, I was always kind of a goofball on the field anyway, kind of having fun. And so I'd, <laughs> I'd go gonna, annoy people. And <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk about that in a minute. But I do got a question. You just kind of <laughs> answered that. Bobby Taylor wants to know, did Aki get to play with Wally Joyner? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Wally's still a good friend of mine. Is he? I still see Wally a lot. Oh, yeah, he's a good guy. Yeah, we. it's funny. We all have a, um, we all have a, a 98 text message, a group text message from the whole 98 team. Oh, and, man. Um, we it's nonstop, like it's all day, every day. And Wally's <laughs> kind of the ringleader. Is he? Yeah. So it's 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 pretty funny, man. It's like all day, just the, just constantly goes all day long. It's, I, I was just saying, Wally had a great swing. He had such oh, an easy swing. swing through the zone, and and man, he could. I loved watching him play, and he was so smooth at first base. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I know, yeah, it's, smooth. it's funny because when I, I just actually told him this story. I don't even know if he ever knew this, but I was in, I was in Rockford, Illinois, and we played at the old Comiskey. So we played the White Sox team and old Comiskey. You know, they had the game after the game. So the minor league guys came onto the field after the big league game. So it was our turn to do that at old Comiskey, which was awesome, right? It was, it was a great old ballpark. And I actually... <laughs> I was just I actually had Wally Joyner's lockers. We were in the visiting clubhouse, and I had Wally's. They still had Joyner on it, and it still had some of his stuff on the ground and stuff. But I had his, I had his locker <laughs> at that game, and I, I always give him grief about that because I'm, I'm saying, God, you must be a lot older than me. I'm in the minor <laughs> leagues, and I have your locker when you're a semi-veteran. <laughs> right? Oh man, you must have loved that. <laughs> I loved it. That's awesome. I don't let him forget that. Uh, Lou Viviani yeah. said, I've seen Arky real scared over a three-foot putt. <laughs> How true is that? You don't get rattled on a three-foot putt, do you? Oh, man. <laughs> you knew you were going to get harassed by a few of these guys tonight. Louis, 
Louis just trying to set me up for you know we have this you know we have this golf I guess I don't know we're, we're competition you know <laughs> Louis always been the Louis always been the better golfer until recently and then now that I can beat him in golf now he wants to have this big match play event and he's trying to get in my head trying to set me up for that event so I, yeah I lose confidence in my game it's not gonna happen <laughs> Lou it's not gonna happen. Lou, it's not going to happen. Joey Rosado Jr., great interview, awesome stories. I never realized how many great players, uh, managers, Arky got to play with. Uh, that's pretty yeah. cool. And Anne Maurice, I remember going to see him in Little Falls. So fun. Little oh, yeah. Falls, yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. Yeah, a Little Falls Mets at the time, Man, yeah. You did a lot of traveling. Yeah. You, you've been all over the place. <laughs> Now they think about it, now that you, over, yeah. you remember a lot of the, the stories. So, Ark, we got we to gotta talk about Tony Gwynn uh, okay. and, and playing yeah. with Love him. Love it. Love it. I mean, t tell us a little bit about him. I mean, the guy, what we saw from TV is class act, mm -hmm. played the game hard, seemed to just be enjoying himself out there. Was that how he re really was? Yeah. Um, he probably... If I didn't get traded to San Diego, I probably would have been a different player, I think, because Tony taught me really. Like, I felt like when I got when I got traded to San Diego, nothing against Montreal, but they were great at developing me. But from from being consistent on a day to day basis and like learning the right way how to do it, Tony was a master man. Like, that guy, I mean, and he and he was really good because. You know, he was in a position, right? He was kind of an older veteran. He was, you know, obviously a you know nine-time All-Star, whatever he was, and um, you know, and he, you know, his team was being dismantled. So he could have very well just kind of isolated himself and said, you know, I'm just going to finish out my career and you know, hit right. 390 the rest of my career and, and be a Hall of Famer and be happy with it, or I can go somewhere else. You know, and he's like, no, I'm, I'm going to stay. I'm going to help develop these guys, and he did that, man. He. He put as much time in with us as Merv Rettman and some of our other coaches did, right? We were, he was out there every day taking video, early hitting at, you know, at noon, you know, for an hour, hour and a half before anybody got to the ballpark. And, you know, and, and he kind of – and we were out there with him, right, because Tony's doing it, you know. Right. And, and he was just fun to be around. He had, he had this just laugh that you just wanted to hear him laugh. And right, He right. was just that kind of guy. I mean, he wasn't, he wasn't loud in the clubhouse, and he wasn't that kind of leader. He just – right. He did it by example, and a lot of people followed. I mean, even even the older guys, like even when Ricky came and mm -hmm. Greg Vaughn came and Ken Cam and Eddie came, like those guys, they 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 would say the same thing because they all they all bought in on it, right? They were all out there at noon, like, and those guys didn't have to do that. Those sure. guys were, you know, they're veterans. You know, they 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 already had their careers. They're you know seven, eight, nine years into it, right? And you know they did, man, and it made them better. I mean, Cammy became an MVP. Vaughn, yeah. fifty homers. Like those guys, those guys blossomed. Wally had his best career in San Diego, right? Yeah. It's, you know, and I think it was by Tony's leadership, honestly. Yeah, you know what? Some some guys could lead by being boisterous and loud and, and just real fire in the dugout, but Tony did it the opposite way. Like he just he showed what he could do on the field and at the plate, and he was just a quiet leader. He was one of those guys who just, yeah. like you said, you follow uh, by example. And and as great a player as a great a hitter as he was, when you saw him, like every you know whatever few weeks or whatever often you saw him play, mm -hmm. that guy was better when you watched him day to day. Like I I've never seen, not even to this day, a guy that was just. I mean. I mean, if you look at his numbers in Hall of Fame, right? It's just, it's just ridiculous, right? Yeah. I mean, but to be able to go out there every day and hit the ball as hard as he did every day, every time up, like, I don't know. It was, I don't know. It was, it was inspiring, but yet it was, you know, kind of, you know, as a young player, you're like, oh my God, can I ever be that good, right? I mean. <laughs> I mean, yeah. the only time he made an out is if he had a line drive at somebody, right? That right. was it. I mean, he very rarely struck out. Right, right. He had a PhD in hitting, that's for that's, sure. That's amazing. Yeah. It, I mean, it, it, it was unbelievable, man. It, and I've seen some grid hitters. Like, I mean, I, this guy was just, I don't know. There was, there was something special. He had it figured out. Like, he, he had it figured out. Never seemed like you took a bad swing. Or he looked bad at the plate on the pitch. Very rarely got fooled. Very yeah. rarely. He, you know, later on, I think when his knees started failing him, he, he kind of took some, you know, he got fooled a little bit. Sure. But very rarely, very rarely, like, did he ever really get fooled. And, yeah, it didn't matter who was pitching. Like, it, it didn't matter. 
he was going to hit it hard somewhere. And, you know, he was going to be a tough strikeout if, if he can even strike him out. Yeah. You brought up the 98 team. What was the swag like? I mean, what was the vibe like in that clubhouse back in 98? <laughs> Getting jiggy with it. That was our theme song. <laughs> <laughs> we had it was the best group of guys man and i think that's why we won obviously we in 96 we were close mm-hmm. um you know we 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 got to the playoffs you know and we we all felt like we were one player away and you know 97 wasn't a great year but when we made the trade for kevin brown everybody knew like okay this is it like this is in. this is our year like we this is the missing piece of the puzzle we we needed and um it was just like everybody just we had fun but they worked hard like i said i mean we we used to hit even even on the road we go on the road and you know we didn't have to be in the field till till 3 45 or something and you know everybody was at the field at noon you know and we were all in the field and you know shorts and no shirt taking batting practice in the stadium and goofing around and it's just it was kind of one of those teams where we had talent but we also had a great clubhouse you know and it was led by you know tony was obviously the quiet leader we had hoffy who was the you know the funny guy and 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 bonnie was just you know kind of one of those guys that he just wanted to be around and cammy was the guy that scared you so you went out and played hard (laughs) for him and brownie was just you know brownie who you know you you only talk to him probably one day a week because the other you know six days he was thinking about his next start or he was pitching so you just kind of wanted to stay away from him yeah you know he looked at you like he'd he'd kill you before he said <laughs> hello so but he was a great guy but he was just yeah. one of those guys he was just super intense right, I right. Mean, he was you know it's super intense and we need so we had a little bit of you know a little different personality from everybody right and, mm-hmm. you know even the bench guys we 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 call ourselves the b-bombers right we you know, when we had chances to play, we like, took pride in kind of giving a guy a day off or something. And, you know, we, we kind of had our own little kind of camaraderie within kind of the bench guys, which, you know, made it fun and enjoyable. So, you know, it was it was it was good. It was it was a great team. Like I said, you could tell. I mean, even to this day on my phone, I mean, I could say we have, you know, we have nonstop group text messages from every guy on the team. I mean, it's that's it's, pretty cool. Keeps going. Yeah, I, I, I want to ask yeah. you this: When Hoffman came out of the out of the bullpen at a home game, and they played <laughs> the music, was it as crazy as we see now on TV? I mean, did it get that loud? Yeah. I mean, talk about getting chills watching that. They showed it yesterday so on funny. the MLB Network. Yeah. How was uh-huh. that? Is it pretty yeah. crazy? It, it's real crazy, and people <laughs> like that really became its own kind of following right i mean people stayed i mean the padres marketed it great and it was a great it was a great experience i mean even after i got done playing and he was playing i i would stay till the end of the game to see hoffy and the music and everybody right. wanted to stay and see it so it was kind of like an event at the end of the game right and you know trevor's a great guy he was he was actually my roommate coming through so um we had a lot of good times but he's, he's such a good dude and i'm really happy for him i you know if he told me he was going to be a hall of famer when he got traded over here i'd I'd say you're crazy, right? You converted shortstop that turned into a closer. Yeah. You know, that's but, a, that's I mean, amazing. What a career. Yeah. yeah what a career. I know. Um, actually, I wanted to get, catch up on a couple of questions here. Brian Cornish wanted to know what pitcher gave you fits and who did you love to see? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh, man. Uh, I, this is pretty easy because I get asked this a lot and I, I always have the same answers. Okay. Um, John Smoltz, I could not hit. Like he, he could probably tell me what was coming, and I probably it's still hit not hit it. <laughs> I think I'm old for 25 against him. Wow. Um, and it was just I, I just I couldn't do it. Like I, and and I always played against the Braves because the other guy that I hit really well against was Tom Glavin. Mm, um, okay. I, if Glavin was pitching, I was in the lineup, no matter what. I mean, actually, when I got traded. When I, when I got called up, I got sent down and I got called up. They called me up just like I, I was on like a 6.30 flight because they had a 1 o'clock game in Atlanta. They wanted me to play because Glavin was pitching. Um, I, I think I, I may have hit like 4.25 off him or something in my career. And I have a lot of at-bats off him, like a lot of at-bats off him. Um, so and actually, so you know, him and actually Pedro are probably the two guys that I've probably hit the best. 
Wow. Imagine yeah, that. I, I, so I always played against Pedro, and I always played against Glavin. Like, if those guys were pitching, you were no in. matter what was going on, I was in the lineup. Imagine that, two yeah. Hall of Famers. That's not a bad, that's not bad company right there. <laughs> it's right? Pretty sweet, right? I know. That's crazy. It is crazy. It's crazy. God darn. <laughs> now, you know, I was going to ask you about something, and somebody brought it up, too. Were you the only Major League Baseball player to drive in three runs on a single? My first hit? I don't know. I remember. I don't know. That, that was my game, first Major League hit. Yeah, that game was on TV, yeah. and I watched it. Mm-hmm. I can't remember somebody who had a ton of speed had to be on first base because wasn't the liner up the middle? Spike Owen. Spike Owen was Spike on first. Spike Owen? Man, he didn't have yeah. that kind it was of three speed. Two count. He was, it was 3 2 was, count that they were and, running. Like, they I, were on the- I followed off like, I think I followed off like 12 pitches. Like, it was 3 2, foul ball, foul ball, yeah. foul ball, foul ball. Tim Burke was pitching for the Mets, who was, you know, kind of a Montreal free agent signing for the Mets. It's kind of their closer. And yeah. And then it was three two and they were they were running and I, you know, hit a long single to right center field, right? It was, it was, it was just, unique. And it was, that it was, was cool. unique. I remember I go, I don't think I've ever seen that before. Three runs yeah, on, on a base. I don't think I've ever seen it. I don't know anybody who's done it. I don't I think I've ever either. seen it again. Like I, I haven't either. A to single be with for you. a single, right? Yeah. Three RBIs. Yeah, it's wow, weird. No you know, you bring that's up. When, uh, that's when I got the first base. I got the first base. Sorry. It's a good story, though. I got the first base, and, you know, being a rookie, and this is it's probably like a week into the season, and I haven't even played yet, right? So I got a couple of pinch hits, but this was my third pinch hit, I think, of my career. And uh, after I got my hit, Eddie Murray was on first base. Another, you know, oh, wow. got another. You know, so <laughs> that list yeah. keeps getting so, bigger and bigger throughout this conversation. Yeah. I'll tell you. <laughs> I know. Right? So he he and he was a great guy. He was a great guy, and he just turned to me and he 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 goes, "That at bat was almost as long as your last name." And he looked on my back <laughs> of my jersey, and he goes, and he goes, and he goes, "You know what? I'm just going to call you Alphabet." So the rest of the, every time I saw him, he's like, hey, Alphabet, what's up? Oh, my God. That's great. That's hilarious. Uh, yeah, great story. That was a great story. You know, you brought up the Atlanta Braves, and that comes to mind. Mark Lemke, who's a local guy. Did you have a relationship oh, yeah. with him? And and do you still oh, have yeah. a relationship mm-hmm. with him? Yeah? You know, I don't. I haven't talked to him in a while, but when we were playing, we did. You know, we all kind of came up from the same area. And I I – I didn't play against him. Like when we kind of came out, he was a little bit older than me. We kind of missed each other through like Legion ball and things like that. So, but when we were in Atlanta, yeah, we definitely, we definitely got together and talked a lot. Yeah. You know, and there, there were a few of us like Vance like and, and Tom Browning. So yeah. there, there were a couple from the area that, you know, we, we always said hello to, and, you know, we played against each other, but yeah, Lemke and I more than. Yeah, you were there. Yeah, there, there, there we go. go. There we go. <laughs> you, you must, <laughs> did, did you get a phone call? Did you hear that? <laughs> we did. Yeah, we got you. Yeah. So. Your sister said right, hello. I went silent on me. <laughs> Your sister said hello. Was always so proud of him. Great brother, Judy, yeah. down in down in Florida, yeah. saying hello. Um, Hi, Carrie, Judy. Hi, Lori. Carrie wants to know. You had the longest home run at the stadium. She said for, she forgot yeah. which stadium though. What's, what stadium was yeah, that? It was a mile high. Actually, it was a Col- mile high. Really? In Colorado. Yeah, I think got the longest. I think it was the longest. Man. I hope it was the longest or the second longest home run of the year. It was like 400, 472 feet. Jesus. But it was, was a mile high. So, you know, in a regular stadium, it was probably 440. So, <laughs> but I'll take the 472. <laughs> you ain't kidding. <laughs> who, who, now, who was that off of? You know, I, I don't even remember, honestly. No. I don't remember. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. But I tell you, the, the other good story is I can at Mile High because Montreal. I actually played opening. My I played the opening day for the first Colorado Rockies game, which is another like probably one of my better memories of like uh, my career because the Rockies were just starting. It was opening day. I was in the opening day lineup. It was in Denver, and there were like eighty thousand people there. Wow! Like, it was wow. unbelievable. Like you know, just being and that was my second year. So I wasn't a rookie, but just having 80,000 people after they announced the two teams, I have a picture of this in my garage, actually. Um, we're standing on the, and people just started chanting Rockies, Rocky, and it got louder and loud. I felt like I was in the movie Rocky because it just got like louder and louder. And it was like deafening by the time they got, it was, it was amazing. 
That's pretty cool. So, Arky, after you got done playing baseball and you you had a great career in the major leagues, what did what did you do after? Now, your son played some ball at Purdue. Followed he in did, the footsteps. Yeah. I, huh? I followed him. I followed him around for a while. I co- I coached travel ball for a while, a local travel team here. And, you know, I got I got the nice parents with the good kids, and uh, <laughs> we uh, I made sure they were all nice parents before I <laughs> took them on the team. But, you know, we did that. I did that for a while, um, and then I followed my yeah. My son went to Purdue. He played. He had a really good yeah. career. He did well. He had a couple of injuries, but he was he was probably a better player than I was. You know, in college anyway, he was he was good. He was talented, but you know, a couple of injuries set him back and. You know, now he's doing great. You know, we just had our first grandkid. So, hello, little Angela. Oh, um, congratulations. congratulations. That's awesome. Thanks. Wow. The time yeah, flies by, man. Yeah, it does. I'm a granddad. I know. Congre- I didn't know that. Congratulations, by the way. Yep. That's awesome. Little Angelo, then. Little Angelo. Angelo, oh, yep. man. Ain't that something? Yep. So, and the name the name continues. continues the streak is so alive. That's awesome. <laughs> well, Arky, you know what? Uh, we got to get into a segment of the show here. It's called the penalty box session of the show. Uh-oh. Oh, man, did you hear that? Doesn't sound good. That doesn't sound good. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. I'm going to ask you five questions. You're going to give us the first thing that comes to mind. You ready for this? Oh, God. Man, he's, he's, he's sweating already. These I'm, are easy. Now I'm nervous. This is now easy stuff, okay. man. All right, ready? First question. Okay, go favorite, ahead. favorite meal? Uh, in Yawkeys. Ooh, in the Yawkeys. You got a place out there that makes mm-hmm. good New Yorks? Or is there anywhere out there that... You? Do you do homemade? I make them. You got to no, be yeah. shitting me. All the time. All the time. Oh, man. I only eat my own. Eat your really? own dog food. That's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. That's beautiful. Okay. New Yorkies. Uh, no. that's, a, that's classic. Man, if you make them on your own, that's, you must have a family recipe that's been kind of passed down on oh, that yeah. one, right? Uh, yeah, 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 I do. Yeah. You make your own sauce, too? My kids make them now. My son makes them now. My daughter makes them. They, they got do? them going. Tradition streaks alive. Got to gotta keep that going. That's, that's, that's a key factor right there. All right. Favorite musician or band? Now or my... Wait, all time. Kind of a, I'm a all reg, time. I'm a reggae. I'm a reggae guy now, so I follow the Green. Oh, I love the really? Green. Really? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yep. We had we had them for a concert in Saranac last year. That's actually. Right. Yep. I was yep. gonna say. Oh that yeah. Sounded great, familiar. Great band. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Love the, them. The Green. Yeah, on. Okay. If you don't know, now you know. The green. I do. I do know <laughs> who they were. But when you said it, I go. Why does that sound so familiar? But they were. See, Arky's hip. Damn, yeah, man, that's, what's up. I was expecting some kind it's of keep me young, band. Billy. I'm hit. I know, I'm hit. I know. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. That's awesome. Um, Actually, going to reggae what? concerts will keep you young in oh, more than fine. one way. You ain't anyway, we won't talk about that. At <laughs> keep you uplifted too. If you will. <laughs> uh, I'm not asking you. Donna has want me to throw in this question. That might be later on. She had favorite amp, but that's not part of the penalty box thing. I'm not going to get. I'm not going to get you in trouble. Donna, she said, favorite moment in the major leagues? Oh, um, probably the World Series, obviously. Yeah. And being a Yankee fan growing up, playing a World Series at Yankee Stadium. I, I could tell you a quick story, but I don't know if you have time for no, it. No, we got Go time. Ahead. There's a story behind it. So we, we had a day off at Yankee Stadium before the World Series started. So we, we worked out, and a lot of guys went to see the monuments and stuff, and I went out there and did that. But then I went – up to the upper deck where I used to um, sit as like a kid during, you know, you go to, you go to, you know, for school, you go on field trips there, right? Sure. You go field trip at Yankee Stadium, you sit at the nosebleed that, you know, you kind of feel like you're going to fall off the cliff watching the baseball game. So I went up there and I was in my uniform still and everything. I was still walking around. And when I came down, I took the elevator and I stopped. I stopped on a level. And when it stopped, the door opened and George Steinbrenner got on the elevator. Man. And he was like, what the hell are you doing here? And I'm like, oh, I told him the whole story. I grew up a Yankee fan, and I was terrified. But I told him the whole story, and I just wanted to go up where I sat as a kid. And um, great guy. Loved the story. Um, he's like, wow. listen, why don't you just go shower? I'll have my guy drive you home. You go back to the hotel. You can, you know, I'll, I'll take care of you. You can do whatever you want. And I'm like, no, nah. I'm like, I'm good. I'm just going to cruise around. But anyway, we went down the elevator. He got in his car. I went to the clubhouse, and that was my story. Wow. wow. Memorable. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So he was Pretty that cool. nice. He was just a, just a very nice. nice to you. He could have three out of there. Nice. Get out of here, kid. I know. <laughs> yeah. 
Wow, yeah. that's that's pretty cool. All right, bucket. Your throats, they are these questions are easy. They are easy, yeah. But well, here's one. How about bucket list player that you never got to play with that you would have loved a bad teammate of? Bucket list player, Mickey Mantle, the Mick, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that or Joe DiMaggio good. or anybody from that era, right? From I mean, Joe DiMaggio was always – my Joe DiMaggio was always – like, growing up, I always wore number five in Little League. Like, my number was five all the way up. Like, I mm-hmm. wore his Joe DiMaggio, although I really never really saw him play. But, you know, my grandfather loved him, and I heard so much about him. So I was always, like, number five. I used to use a, I used to use the old Joe DiMaggio bat, like a wooden bat in, like, mm-hmm. Little League. I used a wooden bat in Little League. I used his bat. Like it's kind of weird, but anyway, I did. And um, so those two guys probably. I'd love to. I love to go a throwback player, go back and yeah, in that era and play baseball. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. And last question. That'd be real cool. If you could sit down and have dinner with any person, have that dish in New York, some meatball sausage. One person, whether they passed <laughs> oh, on, still alive. You're cooking it, by the way. You're making the New Yorks. But if you could have dinner with one person and catch up, who would that person be and why? One person. Oh my gosh, dude! Uh, this always stumps people. Sometimes it does. You're but right. I, I love to hear. I love to hear the answer. They could have passed on. They're still around. Somebody that you would love to sit and pick their brain with, just shoot the shit with. Mm. Yeah, that's that's a tough one. Man, I stumped him on this, right? He did. Uh, um. Hmm. Yeah, I, honestly, I don't know. I, 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 yeah, I don't know. I, I Mark, don't know. I'd Mark's, say my grandfather. Mark's I'd say my and, grandfather. Mark Sinfraco said dinner with Big Ange. <laughs> that too. Right, your grandfather. <laughs> that huh? too. Yeah. 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 Just to sit back, catch up with him, and tell stories and stuff, right? Yeah, yep. that's, that's, yeah, that'd be awesome. I got a bonus penalty box question. Oh, okay. Uh-oh. Prior prior to this conversation that we're having, I did a little YouTube search on you and mm-hmm. noticed a oh, bunch boy. of... I, I want to say you're the original photo bomber, <laughs> right? Because uh. what had come up on, on YouTube was you uh, kind of intercepting yeah. or walking behind camera people or whatnot. I want to know what's, oh, the, what's your most favorite prank you've ever pulled off? Uh Dear man, and, you know I I did a lot of crazy stuff like that. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I did. I, I don't know. I, I always had fun. Like with, yeah. It, people start googling it now. I did some, <laughs> some funny stuff. But I'm not so sure I'd get away with it today. Like on pre games, like during the pre games, I I always like walked behind them when they were live, and I always did something crazy. And mm-hmm. they were great sports about it. I kind of look back at it now, and I was kind of a little bit obnoxious, but it was fun. It was all in good fun. I, Hysterical, I had a actually. great time with them, and they, they loved it. Yeah, they loved it. And I don't know. I, I, I don't have one necessarily great prank, but if you watch that video, um, I mean, if you Google it, um, the one where I was had the catcher's mask on, and I was walking by, and I took the catcher's mask off, and I looked at the camera kind of. That was, that was my funniest one I that thought I did. That was, that was kind of the best one. I... <laughs> that's the one I got to chuckle out of that's for sure. It. I know that's a yeah, classic yeah. video. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, Arky, I got to say, man, that hour went by way too quick. We probably could have talked another two or three hours easily uh, about, about yeah. stuff, man. Um, I want, you know, I got to thank our sponsors one more time before we, we uh, close the deal here with Arky. I want to thank Joey's at 307. I want to thank Geddes Bakery. I want to thank the two Tuka- And Franco, thank you guys so much for sponsoring the show. Um, Danny Maletto goes, great interview, super nice guy. Uh, thanks, Danny. We had a lot of people watching and, and, and tuning in. I wish I could have answered all the questions. Mike Zimadowski said, what's up, Arky? Uh, Rome Please. Indian stories. We probably could have talked. We didn't even talk about the Rome Indian, <laughs> Indian <laughs> days. But we should yeah, do this we again. Didn't get there. We sh- we're we're going to yeah. need another show. A part two. A part two of this and catch yeah. up on all the stuff we didn't uh, get a chance I'm to talk I'm with you. About. I, right. I I'm, I'm two, in. Two things I'd like to add. One, our grandparents are play. They they disrupted their card game in the in the great 
card game in the sky right now to watch this interview. So they're both shining down on all of us right now, <laughs> which is great. I feel their presence every day. But my Arky story that I have to say is uh, when I was a kid, our grandfathers took us to Cooperstown. I don't know if you remember this or not, but after we oh. went to Cooperstown, you do remember this. After we went to Cooperstown, yeah, well. we had come back to my grandparents' house, uh, my grandparents, Aunt and Joe, and um, we were playing in the backyard, and we had this plastic, like, little foam rubber ball, mm-hmm. and my cousin threw him a pitch, and he was swinging a broomstick, Arky, <laughs> and he hit the ball all the way to Kasut Ave, and that's like two blocks over, <laughs> oh and we still God. talk about this to this day. Kasut Ave. Uh, oh, man. Arky's name is still brought up in Leon dinners, dinner tables to this day for because he's oh a legend in the family, God. and it was so cool to catch up with you, cuz, and, and thank you for taking time out to talk to us today yeah it was great it was great and billy look me up when we start doing the rome baseball yes i will (laughs) definitely work on that i already started the preamp to that uh last year then everything got shut down but yeah i would love to hook up with you and work on something to kind of get baseball back in rome and and put your name out there and stuff and and i think it'd be great for the city and to get the kids back out there again um but arky thank you so much man it was good to catch up i know we don't get to see each other much anymore um but when you do come home it's always a pleasure to see you man and i'm looking forward to part two of this we'll make sure we uh, sure. we do that we'll do another show with you and have you on and stuff but arky Good luck. Yeah. Congratulations. Hey, one, the... one thing, though. One thing before Uh-oh. you say goodbye. I know you got, you're going to be crushed for time, but oh, it would be, be bad if I didn't mention uh, your dad and Mr. DeCossi. Like, they were a big part. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, man. Those, those, that, those two names in Rome and, and, and around the area oh, yeah. were big-time they, baseball. They drove baseball when I, was, when I was in teenagers. They, you know, they really helped me out a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. We appreciate that. Shout out to them. I, I'm sure they're looking down and, and, and watching, and they got a, you know, a glass of whiskey in their hand, and they're going, "Man, we we <laughs> we, we love yeah, coaching Arky, without and, a doubt. right? A lot of good times, buddy. Yep, but, without a doubt. But I appreciate you, man, coming on. It's always good to see you. And with Z joining me today, and yes, Todd, thank behind, you, Bill. Todd behind the the controllers. Yeah, yeah great. Arky, thank you so much, man. Be safe out there, and uh, congratulations with with baby Angelo. And we'll catch up with you soon. <laughs> all right thanks a lot Sounds guys good. take it easy all right guys uh thanks for another edition of no time for nonsense bill vinci ryan's got the night off z taking the place of him we are off next week uh we got the week off next week i got my nephew's graduation but in two weeks we're gonna be talking with matt del piano you didn't make the big announcement though I didn't make the big announcement. Aren't you supposed to make a big announcement I'm not, today? I'm not going to make the announcement oh, today. Oh, wow. You're really? We're going to hold off really, on that. You're a tease. You're I, not yeah, the big I, tease. We have a big announcement come up. Uh, we talked to Mark Del Piano, uh, scout of the New York Yankees, a few weeks ago. We got his brother on, Matt, coming on in two weeks. He's doing the Hollywood thing out there. He's with uh, guys like Robert De Niro and, and Alec Baldwin. He did wow. something totally different. So we're going to hear Matt's story, another local kid from Auburn, New York, and uh, looking forward to that. So tune back in on August the 10th for Matt Del Piano. But, guys, thanks. Great show. Thanks for everybody tuning in tonight. If you didn't catch us live, I'm going to post it later. Make sure you give it a share. Spread the word on Arky's story. It's a fantastic interview and story. We will see you guys in two weeks. You guys have a great night.